Hi, my name's Keith Miller. This is a musical called New Wine that Ralph Carmichael and I wrote about kids and primarily for kids. Kids big and little because um, we feel like this relates a lot to us and the kind of problems we still face, but there's no place to talk about. And this is the way the story goes. As you hear in the background is a youth group, and this story takes place in the context of a youth group, but something different's happened to this group. Uh, there are four characters primarily, and the first two you'll hear will be Ron and Janie. Now, Ron was the big man at school, and he's a non-Christian, he's a real swinger, and, uh, but he got snowed over Janie Brillhart, who's a little gal, and, and this, this guy, Ron, confronted the principal when he dishonestly expelled a black kid, and he lost his eligibility. So this kid's got guts, and he's really free in terms of saying what he believes. And the only other kid in school who's not chicken to say what she believes is this Janie. Only she's a Christian. And because they've gone together, he's fascinated with her, and she's conned him into coming to the youth group. So he came last week, which was the first week, and they elected him president, you know, because he's a big man on the campus. He has no idea how to behave in a youth group. And, and the, the first scene opens, is outside, it's outside the youth group, and they're under this big tree over at the side of the stage. And he's talking to her, and he's, he's telling her he, that, that he has something really important that he wants to tell her. They didn't know anything about this Christianity, and she's the first one he's ever known who, who really even took it seriously. And he doesn't understand what's happening to him, but he, he's really thinking about being a Christian. And then he says, but, but Janie, there's something I, I want to talk to you about later tonight. And, and it's obvious that this is about them. And uh, then she turns to him and says, Hey, Ron, okay, but there's something I want to talk to you about. Who are you, really? I said, Man, I know you from the outside. I know you want all these honors and you're all state. But I said, When I get close to the real you, you back away from me. What do you like inside? And then he says, Well, gee, Janie, I, I guess I don't know. That's what I'm really trying to find out. But he says, I'd like for you to know what I am like. It's important to me somehow. Daddy was my hero, Jane, when I was just a kid. He used to take me hunting in the snow. Mother pushed and nagged a lot. I guess she really tried. But Daddy seemed afraid of her Though he kept his fears inside One night I hid and watched him fight And something in me wailed Even though he swore and stomped And swaggered like a male She said, you're just a helpless drunk You're stinking worthless shoddy she swung and hit him in his face You'll never be nobody Never be nobody I wanted him to hit her back Or say it wasn't true But all he did was start to sob And that was when I knew And I ran out and slammed the door and took off through the night The moon cast shadows from the barn As I ran from that fight And I've been running ever since But everywhere I ran I heard my mother's screaming voice you never be a man you never be so I went in bed. 
big for sports I fought and never cried So none of you could see the fear That ate my guts inside And when you came along and said I'm just a scared kid too Then I wasn't all alone Cause finally someone knew You looked right through my phony mask And saw a man inside And when you did that man was born And now his dad can die Now his dad can die After this song uh, Ron tells Janie that that because of what they've got together, that that he, he suddenly feels like somebody for the first time in his life, and that that he feels like he has kind of a new start, and and uh, and he he's never loved anything or anybody the way he loves her, and she's really touched, and kind of this really catches her because she's very articulate, but when it gets to intimacy, it's hard for her too, and so she says. Uh, you know, I love you too, Ron, very much. And uh, he says, listen, how long can a thing like this last between people like us? And then Janie says, How long? When all life is over And every task done This churchyard at evening Will see last sun then Jesus will lead all his sheep up the hill to see the last sunset through clouds that are still the world will be silent our flesh will be At the end of the song, Ron and Janie embrace, and the lights go down and out. That's the end of scene one. The kids are talking in groups before the meeting started. As they talk, we can kind of hear the thoughts of several of them. The first one's a kid named Bill, who tells the audience that he feels terrible inside, that... Uh, Nobody seems to understand him, and he can't concentrate in school, and his folks don't trust him, and, uh, and uh, he wants to, sometimes he gets scared and wants to run away from everything and everybody, and uh, he wonders if he's going to make it in life, and, and last week he smoked a little grass, and his folks really, you know, uh, grounded him, and the only place he can go is to this church meeting, and he, but it doesn't have anything to do with where he's really at. Uh, and the only reason that the uh, only guy he has anything in common with is Ron, who he plays baseball with. And Ron only comes because he's snowed out of his mind over Janie. And, and the second guy's name is Samuel. And Samuel is so pious it hurts. Uh, he talks about he's been saved. And, uh, uh, and because of God's amazing provision, he doesn't have problems the, the way these other kids do. Uh, and he confesses that he knows more Bible verses and, and is more regular in his quiet time than anybody in the whole church. And then will come Betty, and uh, Betty says uh, that she's afraid of people. Um, she'd like to talk to people, but she's really pretty shy. And she's feeling that life's changing inside for her, and she really believes in God. And this, is, this has made things different, but she can't tell anybody what's happened to her because she's so afraid they'd reject her. She comes to this group because she really doesn't have anybody or any place, but She's really been turned on, you know, the last few years about God, and, and it's beginning to, to, to make her feel like that she has some hope, you know, and life means something, but she doesn't know what to do with what's happened to her. And she gets uneasy when Sam talks about the victory, 
uh, because a lot of times she forgets to even pray. But she really loves God, and life's really changed for her. All right. Cool it, everybody. As the meeting starts, Ron Let's obviously doesn't know how to handle a youth group. He's never been in one. So Janie is whispering lines to him um, about to begin with a prayer. Right. And so he cops out uh, and says, Janie will begin, begin with a prayer. prayer. And then he starts talking to the kids, and he tells them that... Uh, that he's really turned on, you know, about being here. That, that, um, you know, this Christianity he thought this Christianity was a bunch of crud till he ran into Janie, and that he's seeing something, but he doesn't know what it is. And he suggests that, you know, that there are a lot of things about the church he, he doesn't understand. And for one thing, the music that really lies there in a pool for him. And he's beginning to listen to the words, and they make some kind of sense to him. But the music is bad news. And he asked the other kids if any of them feel this way. And then these kids open up and say, boy, it's not only the music, it's other stuff that goes on around here, you know, and they're really, um, and a lot of other things, you know, besides this. And so then he gets excited. And he says, look, if kids knew that this really had anything to do with life, uh, maybe they'd come. And he said, let's try to put words to what we're doing. Let's try to, to, to see what it means to, to be Christians in school without telling anybody and come back and and talk about what it means, because I'd like to really learn this. And uh, uh, one of the kids said, hey, hey we man, got a song now. Got and he says, you know, it's, it's floating around right floating now. It's floating around in our heads. It must be God. It must be God. I feel so good. I feel so good. And somehow it's all together. song is over there's a silence and old sam kind of clears his throat and uh, he said uh, man it you know i don't know it doesn't seem very appropriate and everybody's really turned off at sam because they really dug the song then ron says okay let's really try it let's try to be real with each other so we can learn what it's like you know to be people together in christ and then he says but you know if we're going to level with each other i haven't really leveled with you because i've never committed my life to god but tonight i'd like to and then he says this prayer. Dear God, I, I don't exactly know what to say except that, that I've avoided you a lot and I've been ashamed to admit that I'm even interested in you because cause I was afraid you weren't real. I've really been turned off about people in the church, but I've seen you in another person's, in, in other people's lives, and I know they found something I don't have and I want it. They tell me if I'll accept you as Savior... To give my life a kind of completion and happiness I've never known. I don't understand this, God, but I'm giving as much of my life as I can to as much of you as I can understand right now. And then he says, be with us the rest of this week and help us to know what it really means to be a Christian. And then he says, you know, all right, man, you know, see you next week. And he says goodbye, and he's sort of half embarrassed, but not, you know, and then they begin to leave, and the noise goes up, and and then... Bill shouts from off stage, hey, I'll give you a lift. Come on, Betty and I'll, I'll take you home. And then he says, cool it, we'll be with you in a minute. And then he and Janie are standing there alone on the stage, and she can't believe what he's done. And uh, she says, boy, am I happy, Ron. And he says, me too. And then he says, you know, I feel like I've started a whole new life, and you're right in the center of it. And she says, hey, it's not me, it's him. 
And then Bill's yelling at him, and so they go across the street, and they, he says, hey, be careful, you know, it's raining outside, you know, and, and watch out crossing the street. And they run across the street, and then you hear this horrible screech and the sound of someone getting hit with a car. And, uh, and then Bill says, oh, my God, Janie's. And then the curtain goes down. We're seeing a sort of fantasy of Janie's funeral. The stage is dimly lighted by blue lights. Now there are eight boys entering from the left and they're carrying a coffin. The boys, or the silhouettes because you can't really make out their features, are looking down and walking very slowly. Now a blue spot picks out Ron, who's evidently on a hillside in a wheelchair. He's a stunned boy who can't believe what he's seeing. The lights fade out, leaving Ron totally alone. It's about ten days later. Ron and Bill are in the park drinking beer. Ron's in a wheelchair and Bill's sitting out in front of him in the midst of several empty six-pack cartons. He's been very carefully stacking beer cans into a tall tower and both boys are pretty tight. Bill shakes the last can on the carton and it's obviously empty and then he feels in his pocket for money and starts off unsteadily to get some more beer. And he tells Ron, hey, buddy, don't go away. When Bill leaves, Ron looks up and then down at his legs. And then he says, don't go away. Two busted legs and me in a wheelchair. Don't go away. And Janie's dead. Oh, my God, Janie's dead. And he looks up and says, where are you now, God? Unless it's you How much I ache How lost I feel Cause Janie's dead She was so soft and gentle When she caught my eye I stood up ten feet taller I'd smile and I'd want to cry She wouldn't let me love her At least not all the way She said you'd like it better To wait till our wedding day But why? song I saw lonely eagle rise and ride the wind along and as it turned and wheeled the air it dropped down from the grave and landed on the cold stone cross there where my Janie lay Was it you? 
are you real? And where, oh, where's the mighty Christ? Could I have caught her there at the curb? Why can't I, why can't I live it twice? Well, I know this, the deal's all off, at least with you and me. They said just give your life to Christ and live in victory. So this is victory. Janie is dead. My Janie's dead. And life is just no fun. I gotta stop and hide this grief And find me a place to run Cause if God's real He sure ain't much To give a scared kid love And then to squash her Like a bug When Jane was gentle as a dove. And when Ron finishes that song, he turns up and says, I've had it with you, God. Get off my back. And then Bill comes back on with a six-pack, and, and then... Uh, the youth group starts wandering back in, and Sam's in the lead. And, and when they see what's happening, they start whispering to each other. And, boy, they're really uptight about the fact that these kids are drinking beer. And uh, Bill looks up, and, man, he, is, he doesn't know what to do. He says, hey, anybody have a beer? You know, everybody says, you know, no, and they're embarrassed. And then he says, uh, hi, Betty. And Betty's the only one who speaks to him. She says, hi, Bill. Then Sam, with a pious look of triumph in his eyes, begins to sing. There are certain things we can't avoid About the scene we used to know That remind us of the parable Christ told about the seeds he'd sown And Christ said some seed would come to naught And fall on dry and shallow ground And fall on dry and shallow ground There's a Take the dust from off our feet And anyone who comes back home Must prove he will our stand looks in disgust and says, come on, gang, we're no help to these two. Remember Matthew 10, 14. And they walk off. 
and Betty is furious. And this may be the first time this little gal has ever really said her thoughts to a group. She says, Wait a minute. There's something I want to say. Can't you see? Are you blind? Has your stupid faith blown your mind? You're pointing fingers at a man whose heart's in pieces in his hands. What he needs is time for grief. Not At this point, Sam and the group began to list the things that, that they've been taught that Christian is, like moral victory, uh, attendance, program, Bible, witnessing, tithing, humility, prayer, social action. And then as they get finished listing these things, Sam says, being a Christian's all these things, Ron, and, and a good many more. And then he turns to him, and Ron is just sitting there looking down, and he takes this to mean he's under conviction. So he turns to him and says, and we'd like for you to confess your sin, Ron, just as it says in 1 John 1, 9, and come back into the group. Because of your lack of background, we don't hold your backsliding against you. And then he gets real intimate, and he says, there's an old song, Ron, maybe you're familiar with it, just as I am without one plea. And Ron interrupts him and says, except, of course, I can't be me. You know, Sam, your version of Christianity is really unbelievable. You've got so many of the right words about what the church is, and yet you, you smell phony. Now every morning when we wake Even though we want to cry We paint the victory on our face and smile and smile until our teeth are dry But to have pain, doubt or fear Shows lack of faith and feeds your guilt You've got to smile a lot and talk about Jesus Oh yeah, for fear the truth is gonna make him win to study in We just can't wait to tell Just gotta tell About the latest Christian book Called Air Conditioned Hell Oh well I have some friends So scriptural They've got life all rehearsed And when I punch them in the middle Well, what do you know, out comes a Bible verse Well, aren't you glad it's just a Bible verse? Now, just a minute, are you saying it's bad to memorize the scriptures? Man, I think quoting them to show off is... What I guess I'm saying is that most of what we do really isn't where it's at when life gets very blue. I thought I had the victory and really made the leap. I felt the spirit fill me way down to my feet. But somehow you all seem to say that after that we're free. From pain and troubles From doubt and misery And if we doubt And if we sin Then something's really wrong Cause with the Holy Spirit in We ride the wind along Ride the wind along Ride the wind along 
But that ain't true Not for me I gave my heart I gave my soul But Janie's dying Knocked me flat And ripped away a big and lonely hole And what I needed was your love But all you did Was count your votes Instead of answering Well, we don't know You hide behind your little Bible quotes And you're afraid That folks will say Old Brown is one of you And that will hurt your fragile Christ And all you plan to do Well, you can take your little games And play them with some other wasp because my story is I once was found But now, my friends I am lost And boy, when this song is over, Sam is furious. He says, what are you trying to do, Ron? Crucify us? And Ron tells him to get out of here and don't ever come back. And he really lets him have it. And then Sam, just as he walks to the door, he thinks of a remark to make that'll be devastating, and he turns around to Ron and says, Remember, Ron, when you start crucifying me, well, they crucified my Lord, too. And Betty says, Don't forget, Sam, they crucified three that day, and two of them deserved it. And then she turns to Bill and says, Bill, aren't you going to say anything? Oh, me? Well, I hear the church bell ringing. I see the crowds are singing mm -hmm. I hear the Bible reading But where, oh, where is God? Where is God? Does he come to lonely boys A trying to look like men? Does he speak to hearts all crumbled up? Church needs money. Mm -hmm. Gotta fill the pews with members. Mm -hmm. But it all adds up to nothing when someone's asking, Where is God? Where is God? Is it just a program with hymns and shiny talk? Or can Jesus walk inside our guts? Tears and blood make walking mighty slick Where boys the likes of you and me must walk Oh, is the gospel all outside us? Where is God? I'm looking up and looking out But where, oh, where is Bill kind of hangs his head and says, so long, Ron, I'm going home. Um, and then everyone leaves, and Betty's the only one who stays, and she's standing behind Ron, and she starts to leave thinking he's wrapped up in his own thoughts. And he turns to her and says, where are you going, Betty? And she says, well, I thought you wanted to. Betty, you're a smart kid. Why do you stay in this church? You can see how phony all this churchy garbage really is. I can't figure out why you stick around. How'd you get to be a Christian, anyway? Betty just stands there looking at Ron. She's trying to decide whether to reveal this most personal part of herself which no one has ever known. And then she begins to remember. Chintz curtains in a lonely room Muffled conversation without me to their world at three I smile to keep from crying out They 
said, good girl. And so I learned to smile and hide my skinny, lonely, anxious world. Long walks alone, summer rain, trying to drown. Jesus woke me with a shaft of light through the stained glass hollow of his eye. A blue-green garden on his knees, he cried along through the stained glass he wanted out to run away like me He was just like me He understood Nothing moved The world was still As he came down from that stage I smelled the rain and I knew that I was clean. And then Ron, who's just awed by this intimate picture of Betty's life and about Christ being in it, says, And what happened then? Did you say something? What did it feel like? Nothing there was merely true or false. I was not lovely, yet was loved. I moaned inside myself. A leaping heart stood still. Someone came in, and I was not alone. Tearful eye, joyous laughter ringing down my hall. Suddenly his hand was there, and you know I reached out, and finally I was home, and that was all. When she finishes the song, she tells Ron that she's always been afraid she'd be just a lonesome, skinny nobody. But that day, she says, it finally got through to me that regardless of how little I understand or what anyone else thinks of me, that God really loves me just as I am. I guess I knew for the first time that because of Christ's love, I'll never be alone again. And because God loves me, I am somebody. I am somebody. And then Ron 
begins to think through what she said, and he repeats, I'm not alone. I am somebody. I may be mixed up and full of myself. I, I may be phony and I may not understand. I may be anxious, but because God loves me, I'm somebody and I'll never be alone again. Hey, that's what Janie was talking about. Because of Christ, I'm free from my past. And I don't have to prove to my folks or you that I'm somebody. I'm free. I don't know what to tell you now. You've been here all along. You've been the hand I couldn't see when everything went wrong. I love you, God. I feel so strange. The world smells fresh and new. I've got a chance, a whole new life, and all because of you. We love. says, hey, I'm sorry, I'm so uptight and always judging everybody. And he tells the kids that that's how he's kept them from knowing him because he doesn't like himself very much. And he's beginning to see that all he ever had to give God or them was himself. And he says, I guess I just didn't understand what he wanted. And Ron and Betty and Bill say, we didn't either, Sam. And then Ron turns and says, you know, I don't know what the future's going to be with me with these busted legs and all, but because of Christ, I'm really turned on about life. It's like there was a miracle exploding in the air. The sky's a different color now, and sounds come from Holding hands with 
someone's heart while swallowing a cloud. turns and wheels himself over to the kids and says, Hey, listen, now that I realize my job's not to impress you, I don't want to waste any more time being alone and hiding. I'd like to really get to know what you're like inside so we can help free each other. Are you scared and hide it like I do? Are you phony, lustful, and lonely like me? Tell me, I know you're a Christian, but as a person, who are you really? And as Ron's been asking these last questions, the kids, except for Betty, Bill, and Sam, are retreating in slow motion like parts of a fantasy. Each kid seems to be engaged in an inner struggle with himself. Can he be open and vulnerable about what he's actually like inside? Some few retreat a step or two and then turn around and try to say something, but they shake their heads and look down. They stop at different places, frozen. And now Ron's turning in his wheelchair slowly and deliberately toward us in the audience. He seems to be looking right into our souls as he says, I know you're a Christian, but down inside behind the mask where you really live, are you lonely and lustful and anxious? As a person, who are you really? <laughs> 